Welcome to the Gospel Truth Show produced by Cross and Crown Radio. We want to make a lasting difference in your life and in our community. Our mission is to produce biblical, entertaining, and Christ-centered programs for God's people and folks all around the world. Post a comment or question and sit back and enjoy the show. GospelTruthShow.Podbeam.com A mathematical proof for the existence of God. This is one you probably have never heard. This will be going in one of my new books. As you know, I've written over 40 books, and this will be my 43rd book. I got three on the table right now that are almost done, and this one's on some more proofs for the existence of God that have absolute certainty, that have absolute psychological and logical certitude. Hello, Arthur. And this is the mathematical uh, proof for the existence of God. Mathematical truths, like 1 plus 1 equals 2. Think about that just for a second. Mathematical truths are absolute. 1 plus 1 equals 2 is absolutely true in your house and in my house. It's absolutely true. It won't change. When I go to sleep tonight and wake up tomorrow, it's still going to be true. It's absolute. Mathematical truths, truths are absolute. They're infinite. 1 plus 1 is 2. It's true an infinite amount of times that you propose it. It's unchanging. One plus one is two, unchangingly true all the time, everywhere. And it's perfect. It's perfectly true. It will not be altered. It cannot change. So let me say that again. This is the first premise. Mathematical truths are absolute, infinite, unchanging, and perfect. The human brain is not absolute. It's not infinite. It's not unchanging. And it's not perfect. Also, the universe, the physical universe, is not absolute. It's not infinite, it's not unchanging, and it's not perfect. Thus, the mind, as well as the universe, fail to account for mathematical truths. God is absolute, infinite, unchanging, and perfect. God can account for infinite, absolute, unchanging, perfect mathematical truths. There are mathematical truths, thus God must exist. The contrary is impossible. And that's amazing. That's a powerful proof. Let me break it down a little bit for you, then I will repeat it. Mathematical truth is something that is true and applies everywhere at all times. Like I said earlier, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Everywhere. It's true on the moon. It's true at Walmart. It's true in the next galaxy. It's true in 1940. It's true in 2018. And it's true in 2019. Unchanging laws and mathematics are fixed and absolute. Mathematical truths apply to and affect all things. All individuals, all conditions, all cases in general, they're always true. These mathematical truths exist or prevail everywhere. They relate to everything and everywhere in the cosmos and outside the material cosmos. A mathematical truth is an, an ontological reality that is absolute and unchanging. Ontology just means the, the study of what exists, the, the nature of things, what things are made of and composed of. The Bible says this in Psalm 93 too. Your throne is established from old. You are from everlasting. Speaking of God. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. That's Psalm 147. How precious are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If you should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. Psalm 139. See, Jesus Christ sustains and holds all things together. You can see that in Hebrews 1 as well as Colossians 1 and John 1. This is a basic reason that mathematical truth applies to the physical sciences and physics. Christ lays the foundation so that rational mankind can trust and utilize mathematics and physics. The, div the diverse parts in our world, there's a diversity. There's more than one human. There's multiple humans. There's more than one book. There's multiple books. Within a book, there's multiple chapters. Within the chapters, there's multiple uh, paragraphs. Within the paragraphs, there's multiple sentences. Within the sentences, there's multiple words. Within the words, there's multiple um, letters, and on and on and goes. So there's a diversity and a unity within our reality in all things, including how you're composed as one person made up of many organs and on and on and on. Okay? So the only way to account for this unity and diversity is the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three persons in one God. Without God, 
one could not study or know anything mathematical. There could not be, in principle, mathematical truths. The eternal and infinite God is the absolute truth condition that makes mathematics possible. God must exist for mathematics to be possible. Now, what about Allah? He's the, the one that is the second largest religion. Well, Allah does not have the nature, does not have the ontology to account for mathematics because the Quran says, as well as Islamic scholars, that no one could know Allah's nature. So his nature is unknowable. If it's unknowable, then it cannot be perfect because then we would know that. It cannot be absolute because then we would know that. It cannot be unchanging because we would know that. So Allah's nature is unknowable, number one. Number two, Surah 3, 54 says Allah is the best of deceivers. So the ground for mathematics cannot be Allah. Now, if you disaffirm Yahweh, the God of the Bible, and his moral law, there's no obligation to affirm 2 plus 2 equals 4. You could lie about it, right? If you wanted to follow Islam, you could lie about math. You cannot always affirm morally that A is A. So the law of identity also goes out the door. Must I affirm mathematical or logical truth? If so, I must provide an objective, unchanging moral ground for that obligation. And that requires an unchanging God who does not deceive. So two plus three cannot be four, ever. And we cannot affirm that, ever, anywhere, at any time. This requires a universal truth, which presupposes a God with universal power and universal reach, the God of the Bible. God's law commands all men to tell the truth, and he forbids lying. On this truth, this non-deceptive nature, we rest mathematics as well as logic. A limited, finite organ such as a human brain lacks the ontic capacity, that's the ontology, lacks the nature to account for unlimited and infinite mathematical truths. Why? Because it's not infinite and it's limited. Mathematical truths are unlimited and infinite. The physical universe as a limited and finite cosmos also lacks the ontological capacity to account for unlimited and infinite mathematical truths. So where do mathematical truths come from? Why, why is the study of mathematics, why is there such precision in it? Why are mathematical truths so precise if the world was formed out of chaos? That would not be able to account for it. Chaos cannot result in precision. You throw a hand grenade in a room, you're not going to get precision. You're going to get chaos. The room's going to explode. Frege wrote this, I compare arithmetic with a tree that unfolds upwards in a multitude of techniques and theorems while the root drives into the depths. And of course, that depths is God. Hello, Ian. It's good to have you again. One can demonstrate and mathematically prove that perfection exists. Mathematically, within geometry and its truth, one can propose a perfect circle. You can do this mathematically in, in geometrical truths. A perfect circle, a perfect line. Hello, Stephen. And a perfect square. Yet, notice this. Nowhere in all the physical universe can you ever find a perfect line, a perfect circle, or perfect square. Once you start to draw it, it's now imperfect. Even with the best machinery, it's still imperfect. Thus, the physical universe could not have produced the notion of perfection. Perfect, perfection is based on God's perfect nature. Thus, in mathematics and geometry, when one studies and discusses perfection, one presupposes and requires God. The perfect God is a precondition, precondition for perfection. Without God, one cannot account for perfection. Mathematical truths are, here's the argument again. To sum it up, mathematical truths are absolute, infinite, unchanging, and perfect. The human brain is not absolute, infinite, unchanging, and perfect. The universe, the physical universe, is not absolute, infinite, unchanging, and perfect. Thus, the mind, as well as the physical universe, fail to account for mathematical truths. God is absolute, infinite, unchanging, and perfect. God can account for absolute, infinite, unchanging, perfect mathematical truths. There are mathematical truths, like 1 plus 1 equals 2. There are mathematical truths, thus God must exist. The contrary is impossible. You cannot defeat that argument. It's impossible to defeat that argument. It's powerful. And if you're out there and you've heard this program, hear this first. 
the gospel. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians tells us in chapter 15. He was buried and he rose again by the power of God Almighty according to the scriptures. Romans chapter 10 says this. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Luke chapter 18 verse 13 says this. A tax collector was standing afar off from the temple. He would not so much raise his eyes to heaven, but he beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. That's all it takes. Trusting in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection by God's grace alone through his word and spirit, and thou shalt be saved. Profess that, live that, trust that. When you die in your dying breath and you think, well, I've been a good person, so I should get to heaven. I've gone to church a lot, so I should get, I pray. No, no, no. Forget all that. Ask yourself this. Do I completely rely and trust on Jesus Christ's death and resurrection to get me to heaven? That's what you need to do. And every second of your life, you need to trust Jesus Christ. See, Christians need Jesus too. We all need Jesus. Hey guys, you can really help us if you donate to our worldwide media outreach. Just go to our Patreon page at Mike Robinson Apologetics on Patreon or click the donate button on our main page on YouTube and give as the Lord leads. Thank you so much.